Hello guys! A couple of weeks ago we looked at how to add Prisma to Next.js, a Prouder project. We created Prisma client and used it directly to get users. Although simple, this way of querying database using Prisma may not be very sustainable and scalable, because it introduces code duplication and tight database coupling. A better approach will be to introduce repository pattern. Let's take a look at the setup that I have. So if we go to Prisma folder and we look at Prisma schema, there is model user and model post. I also have seed.mgs file that creates a test data and it also uses Faker library. Finally, in package.json, I have migration scripts. We did all of this except for the Faker in Prisma migrations video. So please check it out. If you would like to know how to use Faker library, check out my video about SQLized seeders with Faker library. Now let's go to the SRC folder app. And as you can see, I have two pages. I have users page where I'm querying users. And also I have posts page where I'm querying posts. I'm ordering posts and users by created at descending. So I have to pass the same options to both Prisma user find many and Prisma post find many. As I mentioned before, using Prisma client straight up to query data may not be very scalable. So let's take a look at how we can improve on fetching data by using repository pattern. First in SRC folder, let's go ahead and create types.d.ts file. We will put the following two types in here. It will be a type of user. They will have ID, email, name, created it, updated it, and it will be a post type that also will have ID and then user ID, title, content, summary, and other fields. The obligation of repository methods is to return object conforming to these types, whether it will be Prisma repository, DynamoDB repository, or marked repository for testing. Now let's go ahead and create repositories for users and posts. To avoid code duplication, we will use inheritance. We will create parent repository called base repository. So in SRC folder, let's go ahead and create repositories folder. And in this repositories folder, we will create Prisma folder. Those will be repositories for Prisma. So in Prisma folder, let's create a file called base repository.ts. This will be our base repository that other repositories will be extending from. Let's go ahead and put the following code in here. So we're going to import type Prisma client. Also, we're going to define default order by, which will be created at descending. And we'll also put the max records limit um, to be 100. It is always a good idea to query database and obviously set the limit on how many um, records you're going to get back. So now we're going to export default abstract class called base repository, and we will pass generic A that stands for attributes. So we're going to have a constructor and we will have protected model client, which will be type of Prisma client. Then we're going to have get all method. This method will take options, type of record, and then it will return a promise and it will be array of this attribute. So in case of a user repository, it will be an array of users. And in case of post repositories, it will be an array of posts. So we're going to check if options contain order by, and if not, we're going to add our own order by and default order by. So the next we're going to check if options have a take property or options take property is greater than the max records limit. Then we're going to set options take to a max record limit. So now we're going to return model client and find many with the options. Also, we will define get by ID method that will take ID as a number because our ID is integer and a primary key. So in this will return model client find unique where ID is the ID that got passed to this get by ID method. You can use Prisma's find unique method only on the unique keys, right? It can be primary key, which is unique, or it can be other unique field that you set unique constraint or unique index on. For now, we will just limit ourselves to these two methods. However, you obviously will have to define create, update, delete method, or whatever CRUD operations you're going to be using. 
Now let's go ahead and create user repository. In the user repository, we're going to put the following code. We're going to import Prisma from EdDB Prisma, and that's where we created our connection. We're also going to import base repository. And then we're going to export default class, and this will be a concrete class that can be instantiated. It will be called user repository, and it will extend base repository, and we're going to pass the type user that we created. So now in the constructor, we're going to call constructor of base repository, and we're going to pass prisma.user to it. And this will be our model client right here, prisma client. And this will complete the code for user repository. Since user repository is extending base repository, it will be using uh, get all and a get by ID methods from base repository. However, if you feel like, you know, you want to have a method get all that will not be the same as in the base repository, you can always put get all method in a user repository where you can override the method of the parent class base repository. This gives you flexibility of customizing data retrieval. Now let's go ahead and create a post repository class. As you may have guessed it, it's going to be as short as user repository. So we'll import Prisma from our connection base repository. Then we're going to export default class post repository that will extend base repository and pass post as a generic. So in the constructor, again, we just going to call base repository constructor with a Prisma post. Finally, let's update the code in users and posts pages to use the repositories. Let's go to users page, right? And instead of const users, we're going to delete this and we're going to do const user repository. It's going to be new user repository. Now we're going to use this repository to get users. So we're going to do const users equals to await user repository get all. Let's go ahead and save our changes. And in the same manner, we're going to go to posts page. We're going to remove this code right here and we're going to create const post repository equals new post repository. All right. And we're going to put const posts equals await post repository and get all and we make sure it's a function so now we can go ahead and save this as well now let's go ahead and check if our code is still working we'll do npm run dev let's go to localhost 3000 and we can see our next js application i'm going to click on this users link and now we can see users and as you can see they're ordered by created at date descending so to 24 is on the bottom and if we go to posts page we are going to see the same thing we have our posts and they are ordered by created at descending so we didn't pass order by like we did before we coded it as a default option in the repository. However, we can use different order for different models if we wish to. Let's say we would like to order users by name. Let's go to VS Code, open users page, and right here in a get all, we're going to put the following options. We're going to put order by, and we're going to put name, and we want to do ascending. Let's go ahead and save the changes. Now, if we go back to the browser on the user's page, we can see that usernames are in alphabetical order. This is how you can use repository pattern in Next.js with Prisma. Obviously, we didn't create all the CRUD methods here. However, you have a solid foundation to add create, update, and delete methods. If you would like to see how we added Prisma to Next.js project in the first place, please check out this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.